Hi learners, welcome to Naxo Resource Center. The University Grant Commission has initiated numerous measures to bring three E's such as equity, efficiency and excellency in higher education system of the country. The significant actions taken to enhance academic standards and quality in higher education include innovations in curriculum and its transactions, teaching learning process, examination and evaluation system, besides governance and other matters. This module discuss and analyze the conceptual things and features of choice based credit system. The UGC has formulated various regulations and guidelines from time to time to improve the higher education system and maintain minimum standards and quality across the higher education institutions in India. The academic reforms recommended by the UGC in the recent post have led to overall improvement in higher education system. However, due to lot of diversity in the system of higher education, there are multiple approaches followed by universities towards examinations, evaluation and grading system. The grading system is considered to be better than the conventional mock system and hence it has been followed in the top institutions in India and abroad. So, it is desirable to introduce uniform grading system. This will facilitate students mobility across institutions within and across countries and also enable potential employers to assess the performance of students. To bring in the desired uniformity in grading system and methods for computing the cumulative grade points average is nothing but CGPA based on the performance of students in the examination. The UGC has formulated these guidelines. These guidelines shall apply to all undergraduate and postgraduate level of degree, diploma and certificate programs under the credit systems awarded by the central, state and deemed to be universities in India. Now I am going to define the definition of choice based credit system. Choice based credit system is flexible system of learning. Choice based credit system provides a learning platform wherein the students or knowledge seeker has the flexibility to choose their course from the list of elective, co and soft skill courses. This is the student centric approach to learning for or acquiring higher education. Choice based credit system not only opens pathways for learning opportunity but also manifests learning goals and objectives. CBCS follows a credit system which is attached to course components offered to the students. A credit system for higher education measures various parameters like student performance, outcomes, entrepreneurship skills, contact hours, innovation and creativity, talents, etc. This CBCS system is an initiative of University Grant Commission which enhances and promotes educational liberalization of existing conventional higher education models. Now I am going to highlight some of the features of choice based credit system. The distinguished features of CBSC are listed here one by one. It permits students to learn at their own pace. Choose electives from a wide range of elective courses offered by other universities department. Undergo additional courses and acquire more than the required number of credits. Adopt an interdisciplinary and interdisciplinary approach in learning has an inbuilt evaluation system to assess the analytical and creativity skills of students in addition to the conventional domain knowledge assessment pattern. Credits can be transferred if the learner changes his her branch of study. It is a step towards moving away from numerical marking to grading. Grading minimizes the stigma of fail. The CBCS is considered desirable because it facilitates learner mobility across institution within the country, across other countries also. Grading enables the use both absolute and relative grading depending upon the context. Now I am going to highlight some of the terminology used by used in the CBCS system. First one is an academic year. An academic year consists of two semester, two consecutive one add as well as the one even semester consists of one academic year. Next terminology choice based credit system. The CBCS provides choice for students to select from the prescribed courses like core, 
elective or minor or soft skills courses. Next terminologies course usually referred to as papers is a components of the program. All courses need not to carry the same weight. The courses should define learning objectives and learning outcomes. A course may be designed to comprise lectures, tutorials, laboratory work, field work, outreach activities, project work, vocation training, viva, seminars, term papers, assignment, presentation or self-study etc. Or a combination of some of these. Next terminology I am going to describe here, credit based semester system. Under the CBSS, the requirement for awarding a degree or diploma or certificate is prescribed in terms of number of credits to be completed by the students. Next terminology I am going to describe here, credit point. It is a product of grade point and number of credits for the course. Next terminology is called credit. A unit by which the course work is measured. It determines the number of hours of instructions required per week. One credit is equal to one hour of teaching, lectures or tutorial or two hours of practical work or field work per week. Next terminology cumulative grade point average is nothing but CGPA. It is a measure of overall cumulative performance of the students overall semester. The CGPA is the ratio of total credit points secured by a students in a various courses in all semester and the sum of total credits of all courses in all the semester. It is expressed up to two decimal places. Next terminology grade point. It is a numerical weight allotted to each letter grade on a 10 point scale. Next terminology I am going to describe here letter grade. It is an index of the performance of the students in a set course. Grades are denoted by letters O, A plus, A, B plus, B, C, P and fail, F. Next terminology I am going to describe here program. An education program leading to award of a degree, diploma or certificate. Next terminology semester grade point average is also called SGPA. It is a measure of performance of work done in a semester. It is the ratio of total credit points secured by students in various courses registered in a semester and the total course credit taken during that semester. It shall be expressed up to two decimal places. Next terminology I am going to describe your semester. Each semester will consist of 15 to 18 weeks of academic work equivalent to 19 actual teaching days. The ad semester may be scheduled from July to December and even semester from January to June. Next terminology transcript or grade card or certificate. Based on the grade year, a grade certificate shall be issued to all the registered students after every semester. The grade certificate will display the course details like code, title, number of credits, grade secured along with a GPA of the semester and CGPA earned till that semester. Next, I am going to highlight the structure and the implications of choice based credit system. The first one is called semester system and choice based credit system. The Indian higher education institution have been moving from conventional annual system to semester system. Currently, many of the institutions have already introduced the choice based credit system. The semester system accelerates the teaching learning process and enables vertical and horizontal mobility in learning. The credit based system provides flexibility in designing curriculum and assigning credit based on the course content and hours of teaching. The choice based credit system provides a cafeteria type approach in which the students can take courses of the choice learn at their own pace, undergo additional courses and acquire more than the required credits and adopt an interdisciplinary approach to learning. It is desirable that the higher education institution to move CBCS and implement the grading system. In this, I am going to highlight what is the credit here. Credit defines the quantum of content or syllabus prescribed for the course and determine the number of hours of instruction required per week. Thus, normally in each of the courses, credits will be assigned on the basis of the number of lectures, tutorial laboratory work and other forms of learning required to complete the course contents in 15 to 20 weeks schedule. Normally, one credit is equal to one hour of 
lectures per week or one credit course is equal to 15 hours of lectures per semester. Three credits is equal to three hours of instruction per week or three credit course is equal to 40 hours of lectures per semester. Credit will be assigned on the basis of lectures, tutorials, clinical training, laboratory work, research project and other forms of learning in a 15 to 20 week schedule. Lecture, one credit for one hour lecture per week is nothing but one credit course should be a 15 hours. Then practical or tutorial, one credit for every two hours of laboratory or practical. It means one credit course is equal to 30 hours of practical. Then clinical training or clinical rotations. Here one credit for every three hours of clinical training and uh, clinical rotations or posting is nothing but one credit course is equal to 45 hours of clinical rotation as well as the posting. Research project is equal to one credit for every two hours of research project per week. One credit is course is equal to 30 hours here. So here I am list out some of the uh, structures of credit uh, uh, based on the lectures, tutorial and practical work. Dimension of credit transfer. There is a two kinds of transfer is there, one is a lateral or horizontal. When an individual having successfully completed the course included in the academic program at a certain level is allowed to transfer his achievement in some of these courses to another same level of academic program. Having this course in common, this may be referred to as an horizontal or lateral credits transfer. The second one is a vertical transfer. When an individual performance in some courses within a certain academic program at a particular level is carried over to a higher level academic program, having these or equivalent courses in common, this may be referred a vertical credit transfer. Making a provision for upward mobility of the learner is the rationally behind the dimension of the credit transfer. Then types of credit transfer. Normally, the type of credit transfer divided into two. One is an intra-institutional. Intra-institutional is nothing but the credit transfer process of credit transfer takes place within a university or institutions. It may be called intra-institutional credit system. The second one, inter-institutional credit system. When the credit transfer process operates across two or more institutions, this may be viewed as an inter-institutional credit transfer. Now I am going to highlight the types of courses according to CBCS. The courses in a program can be classified into three kinds such as core, elective and foundation courses. First one core course, a core course which should compulsorily be studied by the learners as core requirement is termed as a course, core course. There may be a core course in every semester. This is a course which to be compulsory studied by the learners as a core requirement to complete the requirement of the program in a set discipline of study. The second one, elective course. A course which can be chosen from the pool of courses and which may be very specific or specialized or advanced or supportive to the discipline or subjective of the study or which provides an extended scope or which enables an exposure to some other discipline or subject or domains or nurtures the candidates proficiency or skill is called as elective courses. An elective may be generic elective focusing on those courses which add generic proficiency to the students. An elective may be discipline centric or may be chosen from an unrelated discipline. It may be called as an open elective. The third one is called foundation course. The foundation courses may be two kinds. One is a compulsory foundation and other one is an elective foundations. Compulsory foundation course are the courses based upon the content that leads to knowledge enhancement. There are mandatory for all discipline elective foundation courses are value based and are aimed to main making education. Next I am going to highlight examination and its assessment pattern in CBCS. The higher education institution are currently following various methods for examination and assessment suitable for the courses and programs as approved by the respective statutory bodies. In assessing the performance of the students in examination, the usually approach is to award mark based on the examination conducted by various stages like secessional, midterm, 
end term etc in a semester some of the higher education institution convert these marks to letter grades based on absolute or relative grading system and award the grades there is a marked variation across the colleges and university in the number of grades grade point letter grades used which creates difficulties in comparing students across the institution the uc recommends the following system to be implemented in awarding the grades and cgpa under the credit based semester system first one is a letter grade the uc recommends the following system to implemented in awarding the grades and cgpa under the credit based semester system there are two methods of grading system followed in the higher educations in india based on the uc guidelines one is a relative grading the relative grading is based on the distributions usually normal distribution of marks obtained by all the learners of the course and the grades are awarded based on the cut off marks or percentage the second one is absolute grading the absolute grading the marks are converted into grades based on predetermined class intervals to implement the following grading system the colleges and university can use any one of the above methods now i am going to describe the grade points the following 10 points grading system suggested by the ugc first one zero or o stands for outstanding for that grade point is 10 next letter grade is a plus it means excellent for that grade point is 9 next letter grade a it means very good for that grade point is h next letter grade b plus it means good for that grade point is 7 next one is b it means above average for that grade point is 6 next letter grade c it means average for that grade point is 5 next one is p it means pass for that grade point is 4 next one is f it means fail for that grade point is 0 next one is ap it means absent for that also the grade point is 0 so next grade f here grade f means a learner obtaining f grade shall be considered failed and will be required to reappear in the examination non credit course grading means normally non credit courses satisfactory or unsatisfactory shall be indicated instead of the letter grade and this will not be counted for the computations of a gpa or cgp the universities or institution can decide on the grade or percentage of marks required to pass or qualify in the course and also the cgpa required to qualify for a degree taken into consideration the recommendation of the statutory professional professional council such as nct act mca bca etc the statutory requirement for eligibility to enter as an assistant professor in colleges and university in the discipline of arts science commerce etc is a minimum average mark of 50 percentage and 50 percentage in relevant post graduate degree respectively for the reserved and general category hence it's recommended that the cut off marks for grade b shall not be less than 50 percentage and for grade b plus it should not be less than 50 percentage under the absolute grading system similarly cut off marks shall be fixed for grade b and b plus based on the recommendation of the statutory bodies act nct etc of the relevant discipline computation of a gpa and cgpa the following procedure to be compute the semester grade points average is means a gp and cumulative grade point average it means cgp based on the use recommendation the first one the semester grade points average is the ratio of sum of the product of the number of credits with a grade points scored by the students in all the courses taken by a learner and the sum of the number of credits of all the courses undergone by the learner it means a gpa is called as an si is equal to summation of ca into gi divided by summation of ci the ca is the number of credits of the ith course and gi is the grade point of score by the students in the ith course next one the cumulative grade point average is also calculated in the same manner taking into account all the courses undergone by the learner overall the semester of the program that is cgp is equal to 
summation of sigma of C i into S i divided by summation of C i, where S i is the SGP of the eighth semester and C is the total number of credits in that semester. The SGP and CGP shall be round off, rounded off to two decimal points and reported into the transcript. Now, I am going to highlight the examples of computations of SGP and CGP. If the students get a grade A in the course 1 having the 4 credit course for its equal point is 8, then if you want to be compute the credit point, then we have to be multiplied credit into grade. According to the course 1 here 4 into 8 equal to 32. So, 32 here the credit point of the particular students. The same manner if the students get A plus in the course 2 of 4 credit course for his credit point is 4 into 9 equal to 36. In the course 3, the students get B plus letter grade means for his the grade point is 7. If you want to call the credit point of this particular students, we have to multiply 3 into 7 equal to 21. The same manner if the students get O grade in the course 4 of the 3 credit course, then the credit point is 3 into 10 equal to 30. Similarly, suppose if the students get A grade in the course 5 of 3 credits, then the credit point is 3 into 8 equal to 24. And similarly, if the students get the C grade in the course 6 of the 3 credit course, then the credit point of this particular students 3 into 5 equal to 15. Now, altogether, there is a 6 courses consist of 20 credit then the credit point of the, the particular students is 158, then how we can be called a SGPA. So, we, we know already the formula of SGPA, therefore, SGPA is equal to 158 divided by 20 is equal to 7.9. So, in this manner we have to be calculate SGPA. The similar way we have to calculate the CGPA. For example, if the students get 7.9 SGPA of the total credits of 20 in the semester 1, Similarly, in the semester 2, the SGP of the student 7.2 of the credit 22. The third semester, suppose the students get 6.5 SGP of the credit of 25. The same manner, the students, if the students get the SGP of 6.0 in the fourth semester of credit 26, then SGP of the 7 in the semester 5 of total credit 26. The similar manner if the students get a GP of 8 in the credit of 25 in the semester strikes, then how we can calculate this CGP? Now, we already discussed the formula for CGP in previously. The CGP here is equal to 20 into 7.9 plus 22 into 7.5 plus 25 into 6.5 plus 26 into 6.0 plus 26 into 7.0 plus 25 into 8.0 divided by 144 it seems that it is equal to 1023.5 divided by 144 is equal to 7.10. Here that particular student CGP here it is 7.10. Next here I am going to describe about the percentage to how we can be convert the this kind of CGP. Normally the percentage equal to the CGP earned by the candidate may be calculated using the following formula. Percentage is equal to 9.5 into CGP transcript. The higher education institution may receive the transcript for each semester and a consulted transcript indicating the performance in all the semesters. Now, I am going to analyze particularly in the SWAC analysis of the CBC systems. SWAC analysis is based on the above features, the strength, weakness, opportunities and challenges of CBCS are identified and analyzed the follows. Strength of CBCS system. It is a student centric. It is focus on continuous assessment and more elective courses offered through the CBCS. It creates opportunity to choose dissertation, project and opportunity to, to transfer the credit between the university and also loss of year or semester due to attendance shortage in any one of the subject is avoided. Students who fail to maintain required attend attendance in one subject has to reappear only for that subject in order to clear the entire courses. Now, the weakness of CBC system. First one is less focus and credit for core area or main subjects. 
students are compelled to study languages in higher education level the third one the options to take courses according to their ability and pace is limited there is no freedom for the first year students to take an advanced courses or third year students to take an introductory courses students are compelled to be inside the classroom for the entire 5 hour per day schedule leaving no scope for independent study so next i'm going to highlight the opportunities of cbcs system student can choose papers outside of the core area so that they can be specialized in multidiscipline the students have opportunity to take extra credit more than minimum requirement to complete the course which will give weightage to enhancing further opportunity higher education grading are acceptable internationally so that students can compete international opportunities credit transfer opportunity and possibilities of taking different courses in different colleges simultaneously to complete the total credit requirement within minimum period next i am going to highlight some of the challenges of cbc system for any new system usually there will be a strong resistance to change from every quarter of the academic world accepting grade points in subject instead of marks and letter grade instead of exact total marks is difficult due to the fact that allotment of individual ranking is not possibly by merely referring grade points and letter grades opportunity to take credits outside the core subject area may dilute the depth of the core area of the studies students may face dilemma in choosing the subject due to their in experience in the prediction future demand suggestion or opinion to enrich the cbc system following points could be considered as the suggestion or opinion regarding the cbc system undoubtedly cbc is a student friendly but things are yet to be needed to justify the efficacy of it classroom teaching should be given importance seminars conference and debate should be organized to discuss its merits and demerits in detail professional training should be given to the teachers to handle it effectively provisions of both percentage and grading system should be maintained its adaptation should be optional or choice based rather than the mandatory all the pg college of india should also be the brought under the cbcs and they also catering the responsibility of higher education on a large scale equalizations in standard of education system should be maintained so the mobility of the students could be checked selection of papers and choosing credit should be governed by the concerned department or institution to make it more effective or guidance and counseling services should be arranged for the teachers and the students while choosing the soft core papers care should be taken about the gap between the central and state university in regard to quality of education as well as the availability of infrastructure at point it is a time to conclude the session indian education system is expected to go under reformatory process keeping in its mind UC has sought the feedback from the experts in relation to the formulation of new education policy however UC has confirmed compulsory that CBCES to implement across the national level undoubtedly it would cost positive effect on the higher education system but India is a giant country in terms of education system which is considered of primary secondary and tertiary education that is higher education the last one is considered more complex because it houses different nature of courses and streams therefore maintaining harmony among all the courses and streams is a tough task however it has been assumed that implementation of cbcs would have been succeed in equalizing the higher education system through the uniform evaluation system flexibility in choosing credit options different soft courses mobility of students and common syllabi are the main features of cbcs but the existing variability and differences between central university state university and colleges in terms of efficient teacher academic environment infrastructure etc will pose problem in the success of it 
therefore it should be better for educationist and policy maker to go with the having open debates seminar conference as well as go through the basic nu nuances of cbcs and its implications to the broader perspective hope the session was useful for you see you next time until then goodbye